of mental disorder. Okay. Uh, for instance, major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia or post-traumatic stress disorder, social anxiety disorder, somatoform disorder, adaptive disorder, personality disorder, or alone, etc. All of them, of these disorders, are included, we know, in the classification system of mental disorder. I would like to underline these uh, manuals, the negative aspects are emphasized. It doesn't matter if it is DSM-5 or ICD. Mental health then is a major problem. In fact, 38% percent of all health problems correspond to mental illness. Mental illness such as depression, mainly depression or anxiety disorders or disorders in children, much more than physical diseases. Uh, the data at the moment are terrifying. According to who, mental health problems are the leading cause and, of disability worldwide. And this is growing, eh? this trend is growing. This is in, in contrast with the position of mental health defended by who. Uh, this organization says mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own capabilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. As you can see, is focused in an important part, the positive aspect of human functioning. Then the mental health, uh, thus mental health becomes the central aspect of human well-being, uh, the central aspect to be effective and productive as an individual. That's a matter if it is for a personal, you know, a person specifically or for the society, society at large. Fortunately, fortunately, at the moment, we have excellent evidence-based psychological training. I also uh, like to, to remember the big contribution by Nathan Agorman, a psychiatrist and a psychologist, collecting all the information in, in uh, the treatments, uh, evidence-based, that is treatments that work. Uh, most people uh, suffering this a disorder can improve or can experience an important relief in their problems if they receive the treatment they need. Also, if they receive this treatment as soon as possible. When this uh, was published in 1998, on when all these uh, studies were conducting, showing the efficacy of this evidence-based treatment, it was expected a massive access to this treatment. However, many people do not seek, seek help because they don't know uh, the existence of these protocols. Also, it is difficult to, to be trained to, to receive a proper training in each of them. So the conclusion is we need a lot of well-trained professionals. We don't have enough professional well-trained. And also when the patient arrives, it is difficult to choose between one or another uh, protocol because they are suffering more do or more problems. And in a clinical, in clinical uh, uh, the day by day, we have very high comorbidity rates. Then we confront two important problems, at least. First, these treatments, these evidence treatment, these very effective treatments don't reach all people in need. That uh, the mental health gap, and we have to overcome this gap. And the second problem is these treatments are mainly focused on the symptomatology, that is on the negative aspects of human functioning. Uh, I would like to understand, uh, to underline this, because from 
my perspective, why should we focus on only one part of human functioning? Sometimes we are experiencing positive emotions, sometimes we are experiencing negative emotions. In my opinion, we should put attention on both aspects. And so we need to broaden the focus and to take the positive into consideration. In fact, Seligman and Sixel Mihai in 2000, they recognized that before World War II, there was also great interest in positive aspects of human fun functioning. And the same, and the same, it recognized by Riff recently in an important paper in 2022. She says, Safety extensive science on positive human functioning was happening well before positive psychology declared uh, 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 <clears throat> his you know, uh, visionary new path. And most of the topics uh, <clears throat> studied in this approach predated positive psychology. For instance, such, some examples. Uh, Thurman's pioneering studies on gifted children and marital happiness, or, or Jung's works on the search of meaning in life, a topic of great relevance at this moment in the research related to stress, uh, uh, post stress traumatic and complicated grief or suicide, are being really very interested many people on this aspect, the meaning of life at the moment. Or what's on work, designing standards and guidelines for children's education. Or we can't, we can't forget uh, or the crucial contribution of humanistic psychology, uh, the third fourth, uh, and also the, the hierarchy of needs defended by Maslow. He's emphasis on the uniqueness of human nature, and then areas such as playing, creativity, and uh, many topics very uh, well recognized in positive psychology now where they are studied and defended by Maslow. Or uh, Rogers and his theory of uh, the person center, uh, he defended the necessity for a person to grow of an environment that provides genuineness, acceptance, and empathy. Or oh, the great contribution, very well recognized also today by Victor Franz, his theory of meaning, his idea that we are driven by a will to meaning or an inner desire to find purpose and meaning in life. In the 70s, remember, in the 70s, a dinner uh, recognized like Dr. Happiness, he was speaking about the science of well being. Uh, psychological research, he says, has been placed on human functioning while studies on psychological health are rare. And the same could be said by Antonovsky, Antonovsky uh, uh, his sense of coherence and his concept, general resistance resistant resources. He defended a similar idea eh? uh, already uh, in the 70s. Uh, we all, all of us, we have resources to create health and well being. <clears throat> And he defends the idea to, to focus on, on the positive, on the positive, also in the negative, but also don't forget the positive. Uh, the Bandura social learning theory and his concept of self-efficacy, self-efficacy is also a key concept at the moment. Oh, I like very much this <coughs> Shelley Taylor, this author, uh, defending the, her concept of positive illusions and well-being. Uh, he says that uh, he defends he, this protective bias toward the positive. Uh, he, she says the positive illusions that enhances well-being, this inability to develop and maintain 
positive illusions in a valuable human uh, resource. Eh? And this is useful to cultivate and promote uh, uh, well being. I think it's uh, very well recognized uh, bias, it's a, clearly a bias, but, a, but a useful bias to help us to live better and to obtain a high degree of well being. Or oh, Carol Reeve, we have been working a lot with his model. Uh, uh, Reeve's, Reeve's model is considered the precursor of positive psychology, the dimensions of Reeve's model we have developed in the <coughs> workshop, we can cite this, uh, the, the dimensions of, the, of Reeves model, uh, promoting self-acceptance, mastery of the environment, autonomy, personal growth, positive social relationship or life purpose. Or remembering also in the 90s, yeah, around the 90s, uh, uh, key authors like Daniel Kahneman, remembering his, his book, no? Think Fast, Think Slow, or Dinner, or Schwartz, eh? defending uh, well-being, the, the foundation of hedonic psychology, <clears throat> or uh, the defense by Sherry Carver about positive thinking, eh? the power of positive thinking, then again, an optimistic outlook on life. Mm? And this optimistic outlook could be beneficial and provide psychological and physical well being. Or the necessity and the effort to measure. Uh, I, ha I have to remember an important scale, uh, very well recognized, and all of us uh, interested in well being and positive emotion, we use the PANAS scales. Watson, Clark, and Telegen, uh, his model, uh, his very influential, influential model on emotions. Uh, Self determination theory by Ryan and Desi, eh, they, they defend people are active organisms with tendencies to, to work growth, mastery, and challenges, and the integration of new experiences into a co coherent sense of self. Uh, and also, they differentiate. Uh, between hedonic approach and eudaimonic approach, as later on we are going in deep in these two concepts. <clears throat> and finally, and the fathers, the fathers of positive psychology, Martin Seligman and Michel Cicel Mihai. Uh, uh, but we have to remember all these previous contribution led to emergence of the so-called positive psychology in 2000. And some positive psychology leaders at the moment, Peterson, unfortunately, uh, he is not with us at the moment, Fredrickson, Oliu Bimorski, or Antonella de Lefave, or in Spain, Carmelo Vázquez, all of them are contributing in, in, <clears throat> in a very important way to the field. But OK. Then positive psychology is a part of psychology, is interested in achieve a scientific understanding of well-being and develop effective interventions in order to promote flourishing among individuals, families, and communities. Then it is focused, positive psychology is focused in uh, positive features such as optimism, pleasure, love, joy, perseverance, hope, pride, happiness, gratitude, empathy, originality, and so on. But the important thing is using the same scientific methodology and with the same rigor as traditional clinical psychology. That is, the methodology is the same. The interest is a bit different. They are interested in some aspect not <clears throat> so well studied before. Not, in part, not so well studied because as I can try to show uh, many of them were part of the, of the <clears throat> psychology well before. Then we have two basic and complementary strategies to improve the human condition trying to erase, reduce all those negative features in our lives, or trying to strengthen everything positive around us. 
traditional clinical psychology in general focuses on the first of these two options. Positive clinical psychology focuses on the second one. In my opinion, both are really, really, really very important. <clears throat> For instance, uh, Cycle Mihai, uh, he defended psychological treatments are not only necessary to fix what has been damaged, but to strengthen what is working fine and to create new operating conditions which will prevent problems to appear. Okay, and now we move to uh, no, we move on to address the possible role of information and communication technology in psychotherapy. Uh, first, we have to remember the crucial role of tools in human evolution. A human being is a living organism that uses tools. And uh, also, we have to remember it's a social organism. And the use of tools modifies the human being, changes the surrounding world, and these changes again affect the human being. Eh? From this, to this, eh? and uh, also uh, I would like to underline that this amazing brain, this important evolution, eh, this amazing brain would be nothing without the cooperation with other human beings. We need each other. We need, if not, we are completely uh, uh, dead. Uh, we have the first games of human evolution, for instance, in cave painting, and then the enormous achievement of written language, different kinds of written languages, and until the arrival of that old technology, that is the printing press. Uh, is, mm, 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 I consider uh, the printing press the roots of information and communication technology. And over thousands of years, there has been enormous, enormous progress in technology. Uh, and, and, and to the current ICTs, the current ICTs, I would like also to underline my doctoral thesis was written using um, the, the, the mm, data were in this kind of <laughs> Uh, tools. And my first uh, book was written in this spectrum. Uh, now, today, we know ICT reach all contexts, all contexts. Everyone is using ICTs. The point is, uh, we have witnessed in the 20th century the enormous development on, uh, of ICT in medicine. This is true. The point is, what can we expect to happen in psychology regarding the use of ICTs? APA Monitor, some years ago in 2017, defending, defending uh, the, uh, the trends, the 10 trends to watch in psychology in the coming years, the eighth trend was technology. And they recognize technologies revolutionizing practice. It helps to overcome treatment barriers, including stigma or access to the treatment and save time and the possibility of receiving care in remote areas. They say it's a, it's a must to, to, <clears throat> to promote ICT, the use of ICT in psychology. And the same uh, defending this important paper by uh, Emily Holmes, in Mark Emily Holmes and colleagues, the Lancet Psychiatry Commission on psychological treatment research appear in March 2018. They defended the, the, the 10 tendons, they defended R5 was technology. And uh, the question was, it is possible to transform the availability and effectiveness of psychological treatments through ICT? And the answer is yes. Uh, the defendant technological innovation offer enormous possibilities. Eh? He, the, obviously, they defend well science, but to, to make important progress to advance in the treatment, psychology treatment fields. 
we have many, 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 many different possibilities. Uh, ICTs are, are, are used to, for the management, diagnosis, treatment, supervision, and we have different, different possibilities. Virtual reality, internet, mobile, mobile devices, devices, sensor, robots, um, and many others. And here in this talk, I am going to focus just in two, virtual reality and internet-based treatment, because our team has been focused mainly in these technologies. VR is mainly a mental experience that makes the user believe that he or she is there, yeah? the, the, the sense of presence, and also to, to feel that this experience is real, it's just as the reality. And then the person is no longer a mere observer of what is happening, but an active participant who is immersed in the VR virtual reality world. This is really a key characteristic. Also, it's an important communication media. We can show the patient other new potential realities, new worlds, because virtual reality can provide special environments where the patient can explore, feel, live, and relive past and <clears throat> experiences or possible future experiences, and also gain knowledge related to their problems. Also, VR has another important um, characteristic uh, because it allows us to go beyond reality, uh, designing and developing new virtual situation or context where the patient can start living in another way. For instance, a patient is confronting uh, to give a talk and she is very afraid uh, for the audience, can try to overcome and can, can, uh, can uh, uh, perceive the audience in another, in another way. Mm -hmm. Also, we did the mission from a clinical point of view, really very important, a total control of everything occurring in the virtual world because it's a shelter environment. Shelter is in the uh, completely protected. Eh? And also, the treatment can be custom made for each patient, each problem, allowing a clear gradation of difficulties, permitting to the patient uh, uh, overcome uh, these difficulties. And it is possible to personalize the exposure hierarchy, and the patient can uh, go through the fear situation and they are own pace. As I say, it's a secure base for starting to confront fears. And we have uh, shown the interaction with the fear situation in the virtual worlds eh, 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 is eh, a new learning that is transferred to the real world because eh, I can confront the, for instance, the, 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 the mall plenty of people, I am an agoraphobic person, very, very afraid. If I only confront this uh, 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 fear situation in virtual reality, I don't gain anything. But the point is this new learning is transferred to the real world. And another important characteristic is we don't have to wait until the events happen. For instance, my next trip by plane, we can provoke the, uh, our will. And uh, again, from an ethical, ethical point of view, VR uh, has another important characteristic, offers privacy and confidentiality. It permits confronting many fears inside of the consultation room. That is an intermediate step between the therapies of it to the real world. And then, uh, uh, VR, I can assure this, uh, like a clinician, has important advantages. It's secure, controllable, customizable, uh, offers a personalized environment where the user can learn new experiences. Eh? Uh, uh, the conclusion is VR can help us in making psychological interventions acceptable to many more people. And it could be potentially generate the kind of results that even, remember, even the best psychological interventions could not produce. I, I, for this reason, it's so important 
uh, Freeman states in 2017, uh, he said, a technological revolution in mental health is approaching. At the forefront may be virtual reality, a powerful tool for individuals to make new learning for the benefit of their psychological uh, well-being. Okay, this is an important contribution of ICT, uh, the use of virtual reality. We started to use uh, uh, with the uh, Giuseppe Riva uh, team uh, in the 90s. Uh, uh, we have quite experience using technology, but the question is, what other utilities can uh, ICT have in psychological treatments? Okay, uh, for the reason I would like to remember uh, uh, the, the seminal paper by Kathleen and Blaze published in 2011. Uh, they say, uh, we have an important problem. The need for psychological care is enormous and only a few people receive adequate help. And he defends also individual psychotherapy, uh, uh, they say one-to-one -one therapy, the dominant model of service delivery is, on, is unlikely, excuse me, excuse me, the phone is unlikely to meet this needs. And there is a need to develop a new portfolio focused on developing different models of health service delivery. Eh? The model delivery, this is the, the meaning of one-to-one. -one. Doesn't matter if it is one patient, one therapist, or uh, doesn't matter if it's a children or an adult, or a family, or a therapy applied in group. Doesn't matter, it's one-to-one. -one. And we have to overcome this dominant model. Uh, she, uh, he also defends that in a paper published in 2015, technology could be part eh, or can be part of the solution. It's not the solution, but a, a part of the solution. This author, Cathy, Alan Cathy, defends we need treatment that have these characteristics. Rich, the ability to serve many individuals, including those who ordinarily would not seek or receive treatment. Scalability, the capacity to be applied on a large scale, or at least larger scale than individual therapy, one-to-one -one therapy. Affordability, relatively low cost compared to the usual treatment. Convenience, integration of the intervention with an individual's everyday life, extendable, bring intervention to everyday setting where people in need are likely to participate or attend, acceptability to consumers, that is potential client and potential therapist, views that the treatment is appropriate and reasonable come on, as an intervention, flexibility, options to choice for how services are delivered and provided because they will not be a single model of delivery that will be suitable for all. And also as the uh, community psychology did in the 60s, the use of a no professional workforce for increasing the number of providers who can deliver a good evidence-based treatment. And also I would like to remember the important contribution by uh, uh, this important journal, Journal of Medical Internet Research. The editorial in 2011, this is Bailenson, the editor of, the, of this journal. Uh, he said, uh, speaking about e-health, e -health, the term characterizes not only a technical development, but also a state of mind a way of thinking, an attitude, and a commitment for networked global thinking to improve health care locally, regionally, and worldwide by using information and communication technology. That is quite important. For this, a lot of internet-based interventions have been developed. When we speak, now I speak um, about this internet-based intervention, we can think about many, many possibilities, 
like teleconference, but we are speaking when we use the term uh, internet-based delivery intervention, uh, uh, we mean uh, we are referring to applications that are based on a manualized treatment, a manualized uh, evidence-based treatment adapted to the web. Uh, that includes treatment components that are presented step by step. They are always present. The patient can access to these uh, manuals uh, uh, to read and also to, to watch videos or to hear audios or to read text or to do exercises. Also, they include assessment, uh, evidence-based assessment, and also they offer guidance and support throughout the process. That is a mix between a clinician supporting the treatment, and also the patient can study, uh, read, uh, uh, work uh, with a manual. In England, Isaac Mars was one of the leaders uh, developing Fear Fighter, and Jody Proudfoot and Kate Cavana also developing uh, uh, Beating the Blues for depression and for anxiety. The important point is, uh, uh, guidance and support throughout the process. The clinician is behind, is supporting, and they are included in the NICE guidelines. I have, or oh, I am pleased to, say, pleased to say that our group designed and test the first system of these internet-based programs. It was called Talk to Me and was intended for the treatment of peer public speaking. Uh, here you can have a uh, uh, um, uh, what uh, glance a glance of the program uh, uh, later on he was tested in a, a, a randomized control trial uh, showing it was useful for the treatment of uh, anxiety disorders specifically mm, uh, anxiety result uh, anxiety uh, related to being in contact with others Okay, what about efficacy? At the moment, we have more than 100 randomized control trials showing that is evidence uh, internet uh, based treatments are effective if it, they are self applied, uh, uh, it achieves modest effect size, but is, a, is effective. Uh, dot, uh, 27, but with some support is as effective as traditional face-to-face -face treatment. And quite important, the person providing the support does not have to be a health professional. This is quite important. The summary about this aspect is that the, the, in clinical psychology review, uh, the, the, uh, they say computerized treatments have proven to be an effective an efficient way to deliver evidence-based treatment for a variety of psychological problems. Okay, then the conclusion is information and communication technology are useful for psychotherapy. What about positive technology? What is this positive technology? Okay, some years ago, together with Dr. Giuseppe Rivas' team, um, Brenda Biederhall and Rosa Baños, Andrea Gaccioli, we propose the need to bring these new worlds into contact, ICT and positive psychology, uh, and we propose the concept of positive psychology. We publish these two papers defending this approach. I would like to underline the neutrality of technology from an ethical point of view. Technology is neutral. The use of tools has made evolving demand, as I said before, but demand also has developed weapons to control their territories, weapons to control people. The atomic bomb was created, but this also means advances to fight uh, cancer. And a knife has multiple and different uses. A knife can kill us or a knife uh, can help us. The point is, really ICT are neutral. Karl Popper would say that the pill and the washing machine were fundamental factor which allowed the women's 
liberation during the first half of the 20th century. And I think he would be right. He would be right. We uh, need technology and technology is helping us. But if this technology have <coughs> enabled or driving human evolution, human progress, can they be considered positive psychology? What about the telephone, the telegraph, the internet? Can they be considered positive technology since they favor communication between human beings? Should all types of technology advancement be considered positive? The answer is no. In our opinion, in order to be considered positive technology, an app, eh, they must be thought and designed to promote well-being and generate resources and strength in human being. Then we define, excuse me, then we define positive psychology that the scientific and applied approach to use technology to understand, enhance and train people, strengths and virtues, thus promoting their positive functioning and improving the quality of their personal experiences. We have uh, the, the, this, this uh, uh, way to present the approach, three levels, hedonic level, eudaimonic level, and social interpersonal level. The first level, uh, we, uh, uh, we think uh, should be focused on using technology just to induce positive emotion, emotions and positive experience. We say the enjoying self. The objectives are to obtain pleasure, even if it is transitory, induce positive mood to try the person to feel good. And how to achieve this? We can design and provide a, a positive sensory experiences or providing positive emotional experiences. For instance, when we or every day we use listening to music, enjoying a sunset, uh, viewing photos of the person or inducing relax relaxation. For instance, we have developed uh, the emotional parts in, a, in an European project, the EMMA project, uh, mood induction procedures that we have used in various research projects yeah, to, improve, to, to improve mood or to change mood, to change mood. Also, in this first level, the enjoy level, we have used uh, augmented reality in combination with serious game to facilitate change. That is to use imagination and games. This is our augmented reality system for, for confronting uh, cockroaches. And then the, the serious game we have developed in order to the patient before the session and after the session continue practicing to, uh, to consolidate the new learning. This is the same, augmented reality and serious game, but in another, uh, in another app, the Magic Lamp, uh, designed by uh, uh, also uh, Mariano Alcañiz uh, in the Polytechnic, uh, Polytechnic uh, University in Valencia, and Marcia Werstein, in order to uh, uh, help uh, the person to overcome uh, uh, the fears. Also, this is another example using serious games and virtual reality uh, designed by Rosa Baños, a TOB system, the healthy dish game, the child lens groups of the food, uh, the groups of the food pyramid, and basic, basic game to obtain reinforcement, to obtain awards, to obtain uh, the, the, the children has to place a series of food in the proper category, and he is able to uh, answer correctly and, and obtain points. Also, we have uh, developed the Butler system. This has been one of the big projects in our lab. It's a very complex application designed to improve the lives of the elderly and help them to overcome the digital divide. At this hedonic level, because the, the, this system has the three levels, at this hedonic level, it is about, about promoting positive emotion. The computer is used 
uh, as a tool to detect early emotional alteration, for instance, depression or feeling to be alone or anxiety, and using virtual environments for improving this negative emotion. It's a first line of care. I, he, here you have the real environment and the virtual environment we have developed. Hmm. Uh, in the second level, a eudaimonic level, uh, 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 is based, this level is based on the Aristotelian ideas of eudaimonia. It is about promoting empowerment in people, try to them to live according to our diamond, ideal of criterion of perfection that gives meaning to life. Because uh, it is important to recognize that well-being or happiness include positive emotion, eh? but also many other emotions which are not exactly positive, like struggle, challenge, or even pain. In this level, the, we say the growing self, the objectives are self-actualization or, or promoting strength and resilience, and we train eh, in well-being, training in reminiscence, uh, setting different goals, basically doing, 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 doing. For instance, <clears throat> we have developed the EMA system, also developed in another European project, uh, designed for the treatment of different disorders. And it includes a, a virtual scenarios to create, to create a timeless place, a timeless place uh, where people can deal with their emotional problems. We have published different uh, papers using EMA for the treatment of stress-related disorder and uh, uh, for the adaptive adjustment disorder and also for complicated grief and uh, for the man management of fibromyalgia, that is to accept uh, 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 and, and manage the, the, the negative and to grow. Uh, uh, at this. Or the, the same on Cotique, using this part, this thing part, uh, they learn to cope and accept, in this case, from um, promoting the emotional well being of oncology patients. A oncology patient, um, uh, just to give them a moment of relief and pleasure. Uh, also, we have developed uh, several uh, uh, small applications, the best possible self. Uh, we have applied the uh, eating disorder or fibromyalgia. Uh, uh, an important project was uh, uh, also in this level, eudaimonic level, health of well-being is a, a, a emotional activities related to health or well-being using VR assisting generate, generate really resilience in use positive modes and psychological well-being. Uh, he was uh, used in a, an important project, Mass 500, uh, is, is the, the, all the crew. Uh, we went there, we trained them of using in order to, to feel better during the confinement uh, the, the, of the project. Also, in this level, uh, uh, we also, the growing self, we also uh, are using the, our bundler system, promoting uh, 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 empowerment because they learn to use the email and they learn to use the internet to overcome the digital gap in, the, in this population. Also, an important uh, uh, was the uh, project Optimi project uh, the, developing smiling is fun is a is a is a system designed to promote coping skills and to confront anxiety and to confront depression uh, and has been used in several several studies and finally we have uh, in a workshop we are going in deep to this to this uh, app is the transversal protocol in order to try to temper the vulnerability of emotional disorder by person. Eh? And we also have add a, a, a positive component to this. And finally, uh, we are using in the, uh, uh, recently 
very simple uh, using Google Earth and using Oculus Rift to target positive autobiographical memory in individuals with depressive symptoms that have difficulties to obtain these memories. And this uh, simple uh, possibility helps them to recover these autobiographical memories and improve their mood. And the same using in a, in a treatment using uh, behavioral activation. Behavioral activation, uh, we have a patient uh, with moderate to severe depression, and they uh, use uh, the same uh, um, uh, Oculus Rift to go before, to go uh, uh, and, and anticipate the, uh, the possible pleasure activities and also uh, function to improve. And how to, you know, to spend a very brief moment on my talk, uh, uh, speaking to something so important that has invited our lives as mobile phones. Geoffrey Miller states in his smartphone manifesto, smartphones are not just new ICTs. They are, they are an occasion to rethink that what psychology could be. And I agree with him. Uh, the, the big, big approach, Emma's and Emmys, uh, the ecological momentary assessment or the ecological momentary intervention uh, to assess or to help patients when they need it and for uh, and as long as they need it. We have developed also several EMAs. Here you have our EMA for fibromyalgia, and we have published several papers. And finally, the last, the last level, social interpersonal level. Uh, it means here a new shared self and the spread. The, we say the net shared self. The objective is to promote social well-being, eh, social connectedness, growth, support by others, facilitating the growth of others. And we are interested in generating shared emotional experiences and sharing experiences and information. Eh, it's really difficult. This is a really difficult. But somehow, eh, social networks are already exerting a great, a great influence on this. Eh, care, and this is a must, no? care must be taken, that this shared experience do not harm because uh, it, uh, they are really powerful. In our Butler system, we have this third level trying to connecting with others, eh, sharing experiences, growth supported by others. We are working on this. We have been working on this and they like, people like. We have also extended this to Mexico and we have connected people uh, sharing experiences, sharing activities. And this is a possibility you should extend. Mm? Human beings in contact and sharing experiences. From this social positive technology, we think a new social self can arise, a shared self net. And we have to remember that we all contribute to build this new self. And obviously, we will also be influenced by them. But finally, my talk, remembering some possibilities, challenge, and concern. First, it's important. Uh, an important issue is our first obligation as clinician, that is to, to do no harm. Even more, so see we are using technology. We published an IPD meta-analysis and we found that there is no greater deterioration than reported in traditional treatment that do not use technology. We were happy with the result of this IPD meta-analysis. Uh, but recently, in 2023, London and colleagues also have conducted an important uh, work on this, and they conclude an appropriate screening tool would be would help ensure that VR adverse effects are correctly identified and reported. And algo, something I completely agree on. I agree with him. It is an important issue we should take care. Smartphone, mobile devices, social networks, and many, 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 many new uh, 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 developments such as virtual assistant, artificial intelligence, and finding 
new uses in clinical management and patient self-care. As they become more affordable and, I, and widespread, ICT are reshaping healthcare. Well, I agree, I agree. Toros, in a recent uh, uh, paper uh, in World Psychiatry, he defends the, this capability. Eh? They have advanced to a point where digital psychiatry is prepared for improving traditional mental health globally. Mm? And the new technology, so artificial intelligence, chatbot, virtual reality, eh, offers promising results. But it is a need to advance eh, also is less developed in the field of child and adolescent. Eh, because we have a, a, a point of advantage here, the readiness of young, young people for new, using new technologies. However, and this is important, several problems surrounding the implementation we need to confront. On the patient side, to better understand user engagement and how to manage and how to uh, motivate them to use, at the provider level, eh, prescribing the, the mental health professional in prescribing these digital technologies and also improving interoperability with existing system. This is a big barrier. And at the policy level, further actions eh, is needed to ensure that clinical regulations are flexible enough to allow the innovation in healthcare. And also, eh, uh, Toros in 2023, excuse me, 23, uh, uh, they insist, they insist that we have, we are confronting important challenges. And these changes uh, we can make will be truly beneficial depending of if we are able to obtain equitable access, sound research, and ethical and evidence-based applications of these technologies in mental health care around the world, taking care of equity, effective for diverse cultural contexts, ensuring replicability, pre-registration pre pre of models, open source tool, open source science, data sharing, and privacy is a top concern. And regarding positive psychology challenges, I recommend the, the paper uh, published in 2022 uh, by uh, Seal and Rothman. They present the great seven challenges that this approach is facing now. Mm -hmm. The lack of a meta theory, the critics uh, regarding the validity of positive psychology assessment, we have to improve assessment uh, to obtain significant changes maintained at long uh, term. Uh, when the, you know we have a tendency to accept to accept prior findings, if we cannot replicate. We okay the contextual factor justification. Okay, we have to be sure things are going well and things uh, show efficacy. Uh, uh, also, uh, an important you know recognizes complexity, very complex statistical analysis to provide simple solution to complex problem. This is not a solution more and more complexity regarding statistical is not going to solve the problem. Also, uh, uh, this um, because they say positive psychology is culturally biased. It's mainly focused on Western, that is Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic context. And these are generalized to the entire human population. And also I would like uh, to finish, uh, remember an important paper by Riff, the conclusions by Riff uh, 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 regarding positive psychology. Uh, she says to recognize the insularity of positive psychology is the same. 
much in, in United States centric, we need also to put together the positive and the negative, no, just to focus on the negative, on the positive, it, it is a, this is an important mistake, to improve some poorly constructed measures, the same, a key concern she underlies the possible commercialization of positive psychology apps, because it could be the antithesis of the original promise of positive psychology to advance optimal human functioning, and also to focus on contemporary challenges, particularly inequality and the pandemic. Such problems uh, uh, bring into focus on the neglected negatives that we feel in current difficulties, including greed, indifference, and stupidity. We should also focus on this. Okay, and a great, and finally, a greater study of domains that likely nurture good lives and just society, namely participation in the arts and encounters with nature, both currently and the study. This is growing, and this is a, a, a growing and growing field of study. In fact, we are confronting important barriers. We have a lack of knowledge on the usefulness of ICT in the health sector and of user in general. Need to restructure the healthcare system to include ICT as a treatment option and need for a great investment on health expenditure in ICT. That will have to be overcome. And I hope you all help us to do in this. Mental health and well-being for everyone. Thank you very much for your attention.